Welcome to Echoes International Podcast, with teaching, interviews and stories of what God is doing straight from the mission field and also within the UK. For more podcasts, stories and opportunities to get involved, check out our website at echoesinternational.org.uk and our other social media channels. I've been asked to, to speak about the challenges and the the changes actually and the challenges that I've seen in my lifetime in, in Albania. And that's supposed to be only 20 minutes. Uh, new work, new challenges, new opportunities. So actually the word, the, the word challenge is a new world. Uh, the, the, the Americans speak of challenges, you know, and they, they brought that in Europe. You know, it used to be the word problem. And so you have a problem with that, problem with that, now you hear challenge that, challenge that. But there, there is a difference. Actually, there is a, a slightly difference between a problem and a challenge. The problem is there and it's stopping you. And that's a problem. The challenge is there still. But the question that makes a difference between a problem and a challenge is... I'm going to get at the other side. So the problem is, is this wall here, and I cannot do anything about it. A challenge is, yes, there's a wall here, how I can go on the other side. So to, to illustrate that, there's a, a little story. There were three brothers, maybe I have to take that quite hard. There were three brothers, and because the skin of the wolves was going quite expensive in the market, they thought to go hunting wolves. And then as they were there with their guns, night time, they fell asleep. And in the middle of the night, one of the brothers woke the other and said, Shh, we are surrounded by wolves. Don't speak. And he woke the other and said, we are rich. <laughs> so that's a problem and that's a challenge. So... Again, we're going to do some sort of review, general information. Three million, yes, that's a challenge. You got that. Three, a million of population within a new city, which is expanding every day. People moved from their localities into Tirana. There was somebody there. Everybody knew everybody. They come to Tirana, they lose their identity. Nobody knows them. And, and so on. So that's a big challenge. But we make that an opportunity. Because, as I said, they don't have friends. A local church can be a friend to them. They don't know where to get a bus. Or they don't know where to, how to look for a job. A local church can help in that. And actually, we can say in, in, our, in our assembly, I'm the only one born and raised in Tirana. The rest, it's all have moved last 20, 10, 5, even a few years ago. So, a general, again, general infor information is a fragile democracy. It's a developing country. Developing country means a poor country. Uh, I'll not develop that. Anyway, so, some, but someone asks, which side of the road you drive sometimes? Uh, at, at the left side or the right side, say, at the best side. So uh, that's a, uh, th this is quite an interesting picture. That's a ply. You know, in, in my uh, father-in-law, there's a ply in his garden. It's an iron one. This one is not an iron one. This is a wooden one. So that's a, how farmers do. They, they, they're living there, and that's a great challenge. I don't have time to develop that. A country of contrast. Uh, more and more is getting a polarization of society. Richer and poor. You can see there uh, a mark, and you can see a donkey. A country of contrast. Now, when you see this picture, the contrast is not between a thin lady and a big mama. No, the contrast is where these people live at the new blocks in the back. So, it's a big challenge as we face every day. But then there is the other side. This is our, our, our beautiful Albania. The work of the assemblies, 
were faced with a lot of challenges. It started in November 1991 by this couple with a team and actually didn't start in Albania, started in Italy. When the refugees from Albania moved to Italy, that was March 1991. Sounds familiar? And then they moved to Albania into November and started in Tirana, Vlorsh, Kola, Elbasan, the main, as we heard this morning, and the main centers, the main towns. And as you can spot the, the red dots, and this is today. People would start in darkness. They saw a great light, and that's Albania. But then there are a lot of challenges, absolutely a lot of challenges. I'm going to talk uh, as some general challenges and then some our own personal challenges there at the work. The first uh, I'll consider a big challenge is first generation Christian. You'll say, oh, it's nice, it's refreshing, but it's a big challenge. You see, I moved to Northern Ireland, 204, and what I was impressed and what I was encouraged was to see Christians with white hair. And I remember traveling from, from, from there's a, a Bible reading somewhere in the north, Bushmill, and do, back to, to Belfast. And as we were flying through the motorway, there was a, a brother who was in the same Bible reading there. And I, I, I saw him driving his car. And I, uh, it came to me as if God has been faithful to him for so many years, God will be faithful to me. And if he has been faithful to God for so many years, that means I can be faithful to God. And first generation Christians is a big challenge. You see, I come from a non-Christian home. Although I, I'm glad how, how the parents raised me, but they were not Christians. How should I raise my children if I have not seen what should I do? That's a big challenge, isn't it? And not only that, but all the, the, the family interviewing in, in Albania where the patriarch, the, the great grandfather or the grandfather is still in power is a big challenge. I, I can tell you of couples who have struggling how to raise their children because of interference. And sometimes, obviously, you are accused of social engineering. And that's a big challenge. Another, another challenge as going against the traditions, futile traditions or way of doing, Peter says. And that's a, a big thing. Yes, newborn Christians, third generation, starting with a clean slate in a way, with no baggage, but sometimes become a big challenge. And then another challenge is Islam. I say that we in Albania, but not only in Albania, in the West now, you're getting like a sandwich between atheism, secularism, and Islam. And that's a big challenge. So 70% will be traditionally Islamic and more and more radicalization. But we try to go against it. How you do that? On one-to-one -one base. I meet with, with my Muslim friend almost regularly, every two weeks. And we read the Bible and we discuss the Bible. And we see, we compare, and that is how we try to, 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 to bring others to Christ. Not only that, doing books. I, I mentioned today, this morning, Peter Williams' book, Can We Trust the Gospels? A fantastic for the atheists and for Muslims. So that's a, that, that's a, a big challenge. Apathy is a big challenge over there. I remember 30 years ago when the assembly started, there was no need to give out invitations. People would come. Now you have to go give out invitations and, and use Facebook and so on. So apathy, and that is a big challenge that we face. How we go about it, motivating people is very, very important. Planning is important. As we read Romans 15, Paul was, was, was a great planner. Romans 15. He'll speak of long-term plan. I want to go to Spain. He'll speak of middle-term plan. As I go to Spain, I go through Corinth. And he'll speak of short-term plan, but first I have to go to Jerusalem. 
and then you have everyday business. And in that, how we motivate people? By planning things, organizing things, and then filling them all part of the same team. And by giving them things to do, to feel, as I said, part of, of the same team. A big challenge that we have is immigration, and that is a huge challenge. Uh, we started our assembly, as I said, 10 years, just a bit more than 10 years ago. We have lost already three couples without counting the individuals. You train somebody, you see him saved, growing up a few years, you pour out your life into him, into his wife. You see the family coming well, growing into the Lord, blooming. And then you get a phone call that they're planning to go. And what you do, you restart again. And as I said, in, in the small community where we are, seeing you know, families leaving and individuals going abroad is it's a big challenge. But how we do that, how we face or how, how we go against that, obviously, again, mobilizing. People have to understand that, yes, they can go to Germany, they can come to UK, usually it's Germany who is taking all our uh, doctors and nurses and, and everyone. And actually, these people that are leaving Albina, they're not, I wouldn't say poor. We had a couple that was working for Google, and still work uh, in translation, and having two holidays a year, just bought a new flat and all that. So they were not poor. They moved because for the future of their children. What can you say? But then if they give them opportunity to serve and to say, listen, you may go somewhere, but what is your, your future there? What is your work, your service for the Lord in Germany or anywhere in Europe or in the States? Will you give much to him or are you thinking of only yourself? Actually, that makes a difference. If we see everything from the heaven's perspective, our life is so short and the eternity is so long. So we have to think today of our eternity. I'm not talking of salvation. I'm talking of, of securing a place in heaven. Absolutely. But in a way, go, giving back to the Lord what he has given to us. He's given us our lives, redeemed now, new. So we have to give that back to him. And then there will be personal challenges. One of the great challenges that, that we face, in a way, is professionalism. Now, who has been out there may understand that. You see, when you take Sunday morning meeting, you have to preach and then you preach in the Sunday afternoon. And then you preach on Tuesday. And then you preach on Thursday. And then maybe you are invited from another assembly to preach. Or to take a meeting. Or to take a conference and all that. Everything becomes some sort of profession. And you lose. That is the freshness. And you lose, you become like a history teacher or whatever teacher out there. You are not pouring out your life into them. And that is a big challenge. How do you keep that? Walking humbly, day by day with the Lord. And not only that, not only professionalism, but then by working on your own, you, you create some sort of bubble around you. Now, we Christians are very good of creating bubbles, and we teach that out there. You see, you see somebody saved, immediately he'll share his, his new faith, newfound faith with his own friends. But then, as he gets into the church, into the new family, and the family of God, he'll lose his old friends. So the, the, the key point is, the first two, three, four, five years after that, he'll create his own bubble. 
His talk, his speech is going to change, obviously, in the right direction. His friends that go in the pub or whatever, he's going not, not going to, to see them anymore. So the challenge is that he has to witness quick before he becomes, it creates, in a way, this bubble around him. So that's a, 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 another challenge. And then there is a challenge, as I said, when you work on your own, you become narrow-minded. Your view is the best view because it's the only view. And how you keep that, again, trying to spread your fellowship with others, trying to reach out people who maybe are not in the same circles as you are sharing life with them. It's, it's quite hard, I, I have to say. And then another challenge, that will be the, the last one, uh, is... Actually, I, I never thought of it before. Now, my wife is from Northern Ireland. We're talking of North Europe and South Europe. It's a very different world of view. Okay, over here, you think of to have the job done. Over there, as more relationship. So, I come from an elders meeting, two hours, three hours, and wife will ask, so what would you talk about? And I'll say, number one, number two, number three. Three hours for only three points? You see, over there, relationships are more important. Tomorrow has plenty of time. And it's tomorrow is still there. So that's a, that's a big challenge. So how are you trying to find a balance between relationship and, in a way, having the a job done. So that's a, another big challenge. But uh, as Paul says, we walk by faith and not by sight. Challenges are there not to be there to stop us. But the question should be how should I find a way to get on the other side of the wall? May God bless us. We hope you're encouraged and inspired and ready to answer the call. Thank you for listening. 